In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. My dearly beloved, I wish to share with you this morning about an important subject that makes a difference between a happy life and a sad life, a holy life and a sinful life, a life that is alive and joyful every day and a life that is in depression. This is the second Sunday of our great fast and the day the church described to us the reading from Saint Mark how Jesus came to Capernaum and he went to one of the houses and the word got out that Jesus is in that house and everyone in town flocked and came to hear the word. So he was preaching inside the house and outside the house there were four men facing a crisis. Who are these four men? These four men, they knew that Jesus in that house and they believed that Jesus will heal their friend who was paralyzed. So they brought him on a bed and they could not get in. It's like sometimes you cannot find a seat in this church, but you can always go to the balcony. So these four men went to the roof and they lowered their friend and all of a sudden Jesus stopped preaching and he saw this man in front of him with the rope. He looked up and he saw four men and when he saw their faith, when he saw the friend's faith, he said to the sick man, your sins are forgiving, rise, go home. He got up and he took his bed and he walked before everyone. This story is always imprinted in my heart and mind about the value of good family member, about the value of good and sincere and loving friends who will lead you to Christ and not to a life of destruction. How many times you have a friend who asks you to lie? How many times our friend asks us to be corrupt. It's okay to cheat. It's okay to steal. It's okay to cheat. It's okay to be a liar. But these are not really our good friend. Our good friend who comes and say we must tell the truth. Our good friend are those who said we are to stand by each other. Our good friend lead us to a life of happiness, not a life of destruction. And when I go to St. Joseph Hospital in Ann Arbor, this miracle and this statues is mounted on one of the wall. On one of the wall. Yes, my dearly beloved. What would Jesus say to us? And what would he say if he looked and said, Where is your faith? 
What would you tell him? Would you tell him I'm just busy playing video game? Or I'm busy texting, even sending messages in the church? Or am I too busy sending Facebook announcement after Facebook announcement? What would you say to him? Or would he look at you and say, You're all right. Your sin is forgiving. So, today I'm going to speak on that phase. The question that we are invited to reflect today is faith of us and faith of others. Who can pray for us? Who can supplicate in our behalf? Who can intercede for us? What would our Lord say to us about our faith? Would we read, would we hear Him saying to us, you are healed? Or would we suffer and remain in our own ailment? My dearly beloved, Lent is a time to contemplate what is important to us as Orthodox Christian. Are we to go with the flow, work, eat, go to school, watch television, get up, eat, go to school, watch television, our day become monotonous. Or would we take account and see what is our priority in our life? The reason that our society suffer from ailment, sickness, and happiness, an unsatisfying career, unsatisfying marriages, life of depression is caused by a life of repetitiveness or monotonous without self-reflection. So kids cannot sit still without not doing something. Our kids are today are suffering from sickness that they cannot have downtime. So we sign them to every God knows activity. And if we see them sitting still, we wonder what's wrong with them. Well, that is a life of fresh. Would that produce better family? Kids should sit down and reflect how today has gone by. Husband and wife should sit down and reflect how did the days gone by. Businessmen and businesswomen should sit down and reflect how did the days go by. If we don't sit down and reflect on what's going on in our life, we will never be satisfied. This is true to reflect on our own faith. Miracles happen every day in our life. One of the most precious prayers that are said in our church is set there to help us reflect of who we are by the 4th century saint Ephraim the Syrian. He became known as the harp of the spirit and the pillar of the church. He is best known for that short prayer. And I want to repeat that prayer for you. O Lord and Master of my life, 
Take away from me the spirit of laziness, idle curiosity, love of power and gossip. But Lord, give me the spirit of chastity, humility, patience and love, and not to judge others. Yes, this short prayer outlines sins and virtue outline good life and sad life outline life with the Lord and with our good friends and life in the gutter being not knowing what we want here is the sins let me repeat them to you laziness laziness is sin sit and doing nothing is sin not helping in your shore with your mother and father at home. Laziness. Watching television all day. That is sinful. The second one, despair. When we have no hope. Other sins is lust for power. Nothing breaks home except when the husband always wants to be right and when the wife wants to be right and when the children always are right that means we desire to control other people and malicious gossip break up many homes don't ever tell something about your friend is not true don't send email don't send text messages kids are dying in school because children are committing suicide because someone sent a lie about them yes my dearly beloved these are the sin that breaks everything in family, in marriage. We are unsatisfying because our spiritual sinfulness become words in action and are born where? In our heart first. Lent is a holy time that invites us to a life of change transformation and life of prayer we have services Monday night Wednesday night and Friday night at 7 these are the life of prayer is a fountain that renew our strength and energy to be alive but rather and what are these things we ask in God? Lord, give me an instrument of joy, humility, patience and love, and to know my own sinfulness. Yes, do family, fathers and mother, leader, do they need to be humble? Yes. Humility build up the heart in prayer to God. It is the opposite of pride. Patient. Today mom and dad need patient to raise family. Churches need patient with the people. We need to be patient with each other. Patient means to endure. To be patient with our parents and children. Co-worker, without patient, we go crazy. Facing this long winter. And look at the pothole. I heard a month ago, there was someone who has gone crazy, had a snow rage, shot his neighbor because there's too much snow on his lot. These things, it can cause us to go berserk. We need patience. He says, Lord, give me love. Love is to show our love for God that reflect our love to each other. You cannot love God and not love others. 
because in others is God's face. Yes, and not to judge others. لا تدينوا لألا تدانوا Do not judge so you will not be judged. Treat others as you want to be treated. So when we judge, we pass judgment on others. We condemn them. Make us forgetful to see our own sinfulness. My dearly beloved in Christ, Christ is looking at you today and asking, where is your faith? Would you say, Lord, I shall lead others to you? Or you said you're too busy, you don't have time for anyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, 